tick on over just a little bit, being a more consistent player off the back of the court. That'll also um, make the big first serve of Glushko um, less aggressive and uh, less effective, even though, having said that, um, she might uh, be able to get a higher percentage of first serves in with these conditions. But it will play sl slower. Be nice for the viewer. We might see a couple of longer rallies compared to yesterday. But um, yes, it can go either way. Two different ki types of players. I like what you said there about Glushko because I think, yes, she might lose three, four, five kilometers an hour on the first serve because the conditions are just a little heavier. But it might give her the opportunity to make a few more first serves. And because the serve is so big, you know that even in slow conditions, the guys that serve big, when they serve well, they're still a handful. So it might just help her to uh, make more use of that first serve. And, and, and just looking at Tikanova, I think Lutzko is going to have to make a lot of first serves so that she can get on the front foot. Tikanova uh, is very solid from the baseline. Uh, she likes to dictate uh, by working the ball around and getting herself on the front foot and then uh, looking for the big round stroke. Should be a good matchup all round. Yes, I had the opportunity earlier to speak to the uh, the coach of Miyazaki. We mentioned him yesterday, Jeremy Bates. He's the, one of the top coaches from the UK. And uh, just asking him how he felt about the opportunity Miyazaki had. You know, yesterday it was 6-3, 4-3. Uh, leading against Glushko and um, they had that very long game uh, that uh, Miyazaki ended up losing and she lost the match we we mentioned these very long important games and what a, what an effect it can have on the set and also the match and um, and the coach said that he hasn't been working with this player very long just this week he's been with her um, her actual coach is um, is in the States at the moment working with some of the other UK players at Miami uh, who play doubles and things over there? So, um, so yeah, uh, we we felt Miyazaki uh, is a is a is a strong player, but she didn't really uh, come through in those big moments yesterday. And um, if she had won that match, and if you look at the conditions today, she could have been favoured to actually win the tournament. Yeah, I think you said it well. That uh, you actually asked the question uh, early in the match. We were discussing why Miyazaki wasn't higher in the world rankings, and uh, it seems like when it mattered most. She had a, a, a trust issue. There was there was doubt, and just enough for Glitchko to pick that up and uh, and come through. Tikanova. Speaking of coaches, her coach is mother of Andrei Rublev, being ranked as high as number five on uh, the ATP World Tour. So a lot of experience uh, coming through. You touched uh, on it yesterday, Pity. The Russian mothers. There have been many over the last 20, 30 years, and uh, they um, they brought many great players uh, through the ranks, and uh, we've seen them through the years, and uh, took an over in a great position with such a qualified and experienced coach. Glutschko will serve first. It's the final. Yeah, a really nice first point. Lot of team. Maybe the way that we're gonna we're gonna see the pattern of the match today. Glushko is gonna be looking to be aggressive and try to end the point, whereas Tikanova will tr be trying to lengthen the point. Actually, a really nice first opening point there for every a any match, not uh, about a 10-point rally. 15 all. How many times have we seen that serve in the semi-finals? It's one that she absolutely owns. It's the big flat first serve out wide one that several girls don't serve that well. So uh, something that Tikanova is going to have to figure out quite quickly. Fault. Thirty, fifteen. Yeah, surprising the previous point, Mike, that Tikanova wouldn't sit in that serve. You know, if she'd done her homework a little bit, she'd know that maybe three quarters of the serve at least are going out widely on the ad court.
Let second serve. Yeah, Pity already we've what seen the way this match is going to go. That play. very Thank first you. point told us that Tikhanova is just rock solid. She's going to work it around. She's very comfortable in these conditions where Glitchko is looking to attack. And she's going to have to uh, be very careful how she goes about that. Yeah, it's tough, to, it's, it's tough to call what what we might see through the course of this match. Glushko surprised us already yesterday with hanging in there and playing against a similar type of player. Well, let's say a consistent player, uh, which Tikhanova is another of today. You immediately think Tikhanova would have the edge, but Glushko, you know, she's she surprised us before and uh, she might again today. Yeah, you said that uh, just looking at things, you'd expect Tikhanova through the match just to have too much, but uh, we thought that yesterday. Glushko uh, found the answers. That's a nice return, just uh, sitting on the 40. wide one and uh, getting a good first hit in. And I think that's going to be key in this match, behind the return, especially off second serves, and then the first ground stroke behind first serves. That's where the match is going to be won and lost. You want to get the first punch in. Oh, that's a great one-two play. That's yes. her bread and butter. Uh, Klushko's and um, really executing that nice low forehand which isn't easy for her she's a really tall player uh, for her to get down to that shot but uh, very well executed back to Deuce yeah those are two good serves and uh, you touched on it Pity on that uh, on that on that break point she made the big first serve and taken over read it but couldn't do much with it so even knowing that she was coming that way. We'll see how that develops. Another good one down the tee. Where does she go this time? Yeah, that's yes. a pity. That was another good first serve. Just didn't get up to the ball quick enough and the ball just dropped down, uh, you know, to knee height. And when it gets down to knee height, you'll see the challenge here is to, uh, you're so close to the net, which means you can't go too high because the court becomes really uh, short as you move forward. Back to Deuce. Advantage, Lushko. Another good serve. That serve could be the big weapon today for Glushko. If she gets a lot of first serves in and gets to place it well, that could be the difference between winning and losing. Game. Well, that's Lushko. a rock-solid uh, service game by Lina Glusko, unseeded Israeli. She holds serve, well tested in that game, but she takes the lead. One love. Pity, I, I'd almost venture to say that uh, Glusko is going to have to serve well. It, it's not negotiable. We've we've seen how the points have developed, and already that game had a couple of deuce ads in them, and she served quite well in that game. Tikhanova is a good returner. And the minute she gets into the point, you have to favor her consistency because she doesn't just roll the ball in the court. She hits it with decent pace, good depth. So um, I think that pattern has been established. There will be pressure on the Glushko serve. She has to serve well. Ticking over as an opportunity to uh, show what she's got. And she serves at Love One. It's the opening set of the Tix International Final. Fifty love. Good start to the game. The importance of the of the first point of each game, especially early in the match when there's still a little bit of nerves. Fifteen love. Let for serve. Solid point from both players. Tikhanova ending up with that nice short forehand, but Glushko doing a great job of staying in that rally. I guess in uh, Glushko's head, you're thinking, she's thinking, what more does she have off the ground? She showed it all there. She had some flat drives, short angles, and Tikhanova is just like, is that the best you got? And she keeps 
putting using her defensive game to turn it into offense. Great point by Tikanova, 30 love. Faulty love. Yeah, and that is a reaction that you saw there. Dushko feels like she needs to go after the second serve. She needs to get a bigger first uh, return in, or the first shot needs to be bigger. And that led to a mistake. And that's always the, the battle that you have. How far do you push it before you start giving points away too easily? Game, what one a one. solid first service game by Tikanova. It's one all. One game all. Beginning of the match. And Tikanova looking very, very solid. Um, yeah, that's absolutely correct, Mike. The, that fine balance between going for a lot, which Glushko uh, knows she has to do through the course of the match, and then maybe in the process making too many mistakes. So she's going to try and find that balance. Love 15. Well, we spoke about the slice yesterday. We often s we saw that in the previous match with Miyazaki uh, having a great slice, especially on the backhand side. There you see the taller uh, Glushka trying to do the same thing, but not as easy for all players. Yeah, Glushka was exposed a few times when they got into slice rallies. Miyazaki with a well, a top-notch slice. There we go. Love that's what we said. The second serve is going to be a massive, uh, play a massive role today. And Tikanova stepping on that one, not overhitting it, but getting good pace into a corner, stretching her opponent, and that then puts her on the front foot. I think we're going to see several points down that same pattern. 15, 13. That is just a rocket launcher of a serve. And Glushko definitely knows that she's going to have to hit quite a few of those today she's got to hit, uh, probably hit 60 percent if she gets up to 70 percent she's got a good chance yeah and that was a big one at love 30 uh, under pressure immediately 30 i must say i like that return that tikanova is using when the really big serve comes in she just holds the racket firm just meets it blocks it decent pace but gets good depth and challenges uh, Glushko to come up with a big ground circle. The lady in picture has got great wheels and she's got a great sense of defense. She knows how to cover the court and get back into the point. So she's going to try and get as many of these big serves back in play. Out. Yeah, just an unforced Thank error there at 30 all. Obviously not, not, meant to, uh, not meant to do that, but that is the type of situation Tikhanova is trying to create for herself. She's trying to get in the point and force the area, but 40-30 uh, to Glushko. Good comeback this game so far. We're going to watch this uh, second serve, see how this plays out, because Tikhanova is looking to take advantage of second serves. And there we go, she tries yes. to get good depth, she's not overheating it, but a great depth puts uh, Glushko on the back foot straight away and I think that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Glushko first serve knowing that if she misses um, and it's not about ticking over hitting winners she just hits a really solid return and she feels like if she's in a rally she has the edge Fault. Advantage to Honova. a good call. Good overrule by the chair umpire. It did look uh, slightly long. Yeah, and simultaneously the linesman uh, yelled and put his hand out as well. So it was a latish call, but uh, two people saw it the same way, and I think it's the correct call. Let's break point. Game well, back to back Tijonova. doubles, and uh, we we said it at the top of this match. Tijonova there will be a lot of pressure on that serve, one, first and she knows she cannot just roll it in. So she went for a little extra back to back double faults, and it's uh, the number six seed, Anastasia Tikhanova of Russia, picks up the first break. She leads two games to one. Tikhanova looking 
very impressive at the moment. She's uh, she's a great athlete. You can see that she probably wins a lot of her matches uh, with her athletic ability, getting to a lot of tough shots, and uh, that's needed today. And so far, early in the match, she's already proven and, and, and shown us the way she's going to play. It's going to be up to Glushko to counter that with her aggressive style of play. But it won't be easy. The conditions are heavy today in Pretoria. It's very cloudy and um, kind of coolish. And um, that favors the more consistent play a little bit. Uh, Glushko uh, really needs to step up on that percentage of first serve. She needs to get a lot of them in. When it goes in, she wins most of the points. But um, a great matchup we have today, and, um, and we're looking forward to a great contest. I think what's been most impressive for me is that Tikhanova has been settled from the first point. This is, she likes the stage, she likes where she is, she's not overwhelmed. Where we've seen Glushko uh, a little bit up and down to start with, but it was the same yesterday, so we'll give her a few minutes to settle down and see uh, if she can find her rhythm. Tikhanova. Up a break, 2-1. Out. 15 up. Let for serve. Thirty love. Well, Tiganova just continuing uh, with absolute consistency. At this stage, just doing everything right. She's making a lot of first serves. She's making a lot of returns, and when there's half an opportunity, she uh, she's hit the ground strokes to perfection. Just, just like that, races to a 40 love. That's a more positive point by Glushko. Tikhanova not making We're too down. many unforced yeah. errors at the moment. That's one of the very few that she's made. But comfortable in still in control of this game at 40-15. Trying to get ahead and uh, secure uh, the very important break that she had the previous game. Another good return by Glushko. 40, just 30. managing to apply a little bit of pressure on the Tikhanova serve. I think Lushko is just going to have to find that balance between not going for too much and just first getting into the rallies and then find the opportunities. Um, two quick unforced errors by um, Tikhanova. Unexpected to this point, I must say, but they were two good returns and the lady in picture needs more of that. She needs to get into the rallies first and then pick her spots and opportunities to attack. Uh, I don't think she can just fire away from the first ball. Tikhanova is too solid. She puts the ball in good positions uh, and it'll be too risky to uh, just pull the trigger at any given time. So 40-30. Uh, well, it's, it's game to Tikhanova, but Klushko Absolutely doing the right thing by stepping in and being aggressive um, on the second serve. Well, even though on the first serve, but more positive game from Glushko. And Tikhanova will definitely start feeling the pressure if she doesn't get enough on her own serve. That's the only chance that uh, Glushko has to to possibly get that uh, that break. 
think she'll be very disappointed with that last forehand, but she actually got a mid-court ball. She had the inside out on the racket, and I reckon those are the ones she needs to make. As well as serve well, we've established that because Tikanova is going to put pressure on the serve. So 1-3. Uh, and uh, even early in the match, important for Glitchko to hold serve. Holy cow. Love 15. That is just a fantastic return. When you decide to take that return up the line, it's never easy. That's the shorter part of the court, small target, but executed to, to perfection. Yeah, it seems like Tikanova is starting to pick up on uh, the Glitchko serve, like she's reading it. Uh, there's been a couple of really good returns where she's sitting on them. It's almost like she's waiting. Even this one, you'll see, she gets a good hit on it, and that was a good first serve. She's starting to read the serves um, by Glitchko. Yeah. Oh, great that was, really, no, that was before the line. touch no, no. and feel that was really good. No. by Tikanova moving forward. 30. That's often a great play is a, is a drop shot on a drop shot or a shorter ball. But that looked really fo uh, comfortably out, I must say. Glutschko does have a good point on querying that call. Yeah, those are the shots 14. that we spoke about. She cannot afford to miss those. Again, the mid-court ball. She makes that. She's in charge. You'll see this. A real opportunity. This is mid-court. She's moving forward. And maybe that's the problem. Not moving forward enough. Kind of stuck on the baseline and waiting for the ball to come. But as it comes, it drops. Uh, and then you need more topspin. So um, those are the points that she needs to capitalize on. Game. Oh, that's just an unforced one error on the very important break point. Tikhanova getting the second break of the match, taking a commanding lead with 4-1, serving. Yeah, that was Mrs. Rublev right there. I'm not sure if in Russian she'll be a Rubleva. I'm not sure. Yeah, they usually have that uh, female version of the surname. Safin Safina, so is she Rubleva. Nonetheless, she uh, is happy with her charge at this stage. And again, she's played the point well. She gets up to net, she has a straightforward volley and then hands the point to her opponent. So there's been three or four points in the last two games where she finds the pattern and loses the point on final execution. And uh, I think this match is going to be tough as it is. She cannot afford to not take opportunities like that. It's a double break. Anastasia Tikhanova, the number six seed, leads four games to one. Not completely different to yesterday, Pidi. Uh, Glitchko was a slow starter against Miyazaki as well and started finding her feet you know, late-ish in the first, but really mid-second set is where she came through strong. Yes, it's still relatively early days in the match. Tikhanova serving 4-1. Glushko at the moment just struggling a little bit with uh, execution. She gets herself in a great position in most of these rallies, but uh, making too many unforced errors at the moment. A little bit of a wild second serve. Sometimes when you comfortably leading at 4-1 serving uh, the mind can start wandering he can get a bit loose uh, as we saw there yeah it starts wandering but you also start going to the finish line you're like well kind of just keep doing what i'm doing and we'll get to 6-2 and that's kind of the set but always got to be focused always got to work hard we'll see how she responds to that good players will then realize hang on i'm not as sharp as i need to be and they'll come back quite strong but Yes, Tikhanova will 13. be very aware of the importance of this match. There's a lot of 
WTA points that she can earn if she wins this match way more than the finals and that can have a huge improvement on her current ranking of uh, 226 in the world she can break the top 200 possibly go as high as 180 190 so it's a very important match for her so even though she's leading she'll be aware of that keep the ball on your hand yeah yeah and back to back uh, double faults is not going to help her cause you don't want to give one of those breaks back. That double break is a nice cushion to work off. That's all. Yeah, especially since we've seen what Glushka can do yesterday. She was in trouble yesterday at 6-3, 4-3, break point down. But hung in there and came back to win the match. So um, uh, Tikhanova will be aware of that and trying to put away if she can. Positive point 30, by taking over with great depth on those grind strokes, making it difficult for Glushko. Yeah, and this is a game that she needs to get through. It's been a bit scrappy, it's been a bit iffy, but if she can close this one out, she'll find her rhythm again. And, uh, it was a similar game yesterday at 4-3 in the second. Also a scrappy game, but finally Glushko got through and won it. And that's where her momentum started. Whoa! So uh, Tikhanova would like to make sure that she closes this out. An opportunity for a 5-1 lead. Surprisingly, with three double faults, she's still in the game. Often if you serve maybe two double faults, definitely a third, the game would be over by now. It's just uh, showing us how much she is in command. This is a, a relative game where the set can be secured if she does win this game. Otherwise, there's a big difference between 5-1 and 4-2. Wonderful playing by Glushko. She's putting in a great effort to, to hang in there in this first set. She's just earned herself a break point. Yeah, that's quite similar to yesterday. It is a scrappy game. A couple of double faults by Tikhanova. Now a missed forehand. A pretty regulation ground stroke. And uh, that, that's where Glushko got into it yesterday in the same way. So um, a small opportunity it's a double break but you you get a break here you hold confidently and all of a sudden your opponent's thinking oh this match is going the wrong way a touch of luck will do it that is massive for uh, lina glushko a little bit of luck off the leg court, but she picks up the break and uh, she now trails by only one break four games to two this could be big pity yes tennis um has always got his twists and turns and those were just one of them. Glushko seemingly almost out of this first set with possibly 5-1 down. Now suddenly it's 4-2 serving. If she can play a good game now, she's right back in it. No, that is just a great first serve. It looked like it hit the line. 15 love, Glushko. Big first serve once again, setting up the short ball. Another miss by Glushko. She's missed at least five or six of those already in this match. Yeah, she's, she's late in getting to the ball. That wasn't that bad. Maybe just not getting the, the preparation as she moves forward. And that's often the problem. When players move forward really hard, they're a bit slow in getting the racket into position. Uh, easier when you're going left to right. But those are the opportunities she has to take. That's much better. There we go. She's made one of those short ones. That'll mean a lot to her confidence. That'll help her. Mike, I was just, just, just watching uh, Glushko, you know, she had a really long match yesterday. I'm wondering physically if she's recovered properly coming into today. She looks slightly slower. Yeah, and it's not just that match. Uh, you've got to look through all her matches of the week, you know, because it's a long week. And uh, 
I see she had a walkover in the second round, so not too heavy through the week. So maybe just yesterday a little bit of uh, leftover in the body. Oh, great defense by Glushko. Just as we mentioned it, she's just showing us that she's got a bit of something left in the tank. And she's earned herself a game point. Yeah, and that's what you'd like to see as a coach. You'd like to see Glushko get in the trenches a little bit more. She's got the big serve and the big ground stroke, but she's got to get down and, and battle and fight and scrap and get the defensive game steal one or two points game Glushko. and this is very good that is a great hold for uh, Glutschko she trails three, three games to four set. opening set yes in uh, Glushko's defense yesterday as well as what we've just seen the last two games she really has the ability mentally to hang in there and keep herself in a set uh, whereas she was literally one point away possibly from losing that set and now it's back to 4-3 and even though it's a tick and over serve uh, tick and over not really dominating on her serve games with her with her first serve she kind of just makes it and tries to win the point from the back of the court so Glushko is not going to be worried about being blown off the court by a very strong first serve so uh, Glushko is going to feel that she's right back in it with her with a chance in the set you touched on it earlier she was um, taken over in picture was so close to a 5-1 lead and that kind of seals the set uh, unlikely that you're going to turn it around from there but the lady in picture has found a way Time. to put pressure on taken over yes she's still up a break but there's no uh, there's no guarantee that the set is over especially seeing that taken over through in three uh, through in uh, three double faults that previous service game and always when you've done that you know that sits in the back of your mind just a little bit as we get to the business end of the set yeah, and it's just not pressure on the second serve there's now pressure on the first serve because you don't want to serve too many second serves so uh, let's see how she goes she still leads the 4-3 good first serve Glushka just missing slightly with her down the line but that's the way she's going to play she's got to go for a couple That looked a little nervy. Uh, the second serve hasn't been great the last 10 minutes with those three double faults. Now the lead court I'm mean, a lot of pressure on this serve right now. Uh, that, uh, cannot afford that. She needs to put every one of those second serves back into play. Just letting uh, taken over off the hook a little bit. Yeah, got stuck with the feet. Yeah, probably the area that Litchko can improve the most, I think, Pity, from watching yesterday and today, is that uh, it's, the, it's the finer art of footwork, getting into the best positions, not in good positions, getting into the best positions. Another double fault. Um, tall people cover the court really well but that does not mean that they get into perfect positions on balance when they want to hit the ball and just watching Glutzko she's pretty good left to right she's not great moving forward uh, a in identifying the short ball and two once she moves she doesn't move effectively to the short ball so left for serve. actually a scary thought that she can get that much better she already has the power and it's always nice when you look at someone and know that this is not their their ceiling there's still more to come That's your yeah, she's she's a good player and she's still young. She's 21 years old and she's got a lot of years ahead of her. You know, the, it's not like it's uh, 30, 20, 30 years ago where the players have got to break into the top 100, you know, when they 17, 18, 19 years old. Yeah, these days the players are breaking in 24, 25. So she still has a, a couple of years left. She's 22 years old. And um, yeah, she's got a lot of weapons. 
and she will she will learn a lot. Uh, this is her first finals of a sixty thousand dollar event, so she will learn a lot from the experience, whichever way it goes. Much better on that ball. You could see her get down low early. She didn't run up to the ball and then try and catch up to it. She was coming in off a low base. As we see the president of TSA, Derry Crooks, having a chat to tournament referee Ian Smith. Probably just telling each other what a fantastic week it was. Ian Smith, the head of the referees in South Africa, as well as traveling overseas, very experienced. And... Um, Yes, the president of Tennis South Africa, Gavin Crooks, um, uh, having a chat and uh, they've really done a great job with, uh, with this event. They've partnered the ITF and also the Tux Tennis uh, Centre where we're at at the moment. Beautiful venue. Yeah, good point. I just turned uh, Gavin into a great cricketer. Uh, I'm sure he'd be happy with that. Uh, but other than a good cricketer, he's been a great tennis administrator. So uh, apologies there, Gavin. Yes. Great serve. Just saving the break point. Yeah, big point that. 4-3, you were up 4-1 with opportunities to go 5-1. And she was one point away from getting it to four rolls. So uh, massive momentum point and game at this stage. Thank you. Big Advantage pressure serve there just by making it. Uh, Glushko not getting down for that ball. It did seem like that second serve shot through a little bit. And not the hardest of serves, but it stayed low. And Glushko being a, an extremely tall player, she needs to get down there in order to get underneath the ball, which she didn't quite master that time. Advantage taken over. Yes. You see, and this game is very similar to that Miyazaki 4-3 game yesterday. It's many mistakes, tight playing. They both realize where they are in the match. And uh, we saw the nervy second serve return on the deuce because there's pressure on making that second serve, but there's also pressure on making the second serve routine, uh, return. There are opportunities both ways right now. And again, a second serve at deuce. Advantage, Another opportunity for Tikhonova to take a 5-3 lead. Advantage. Oh. And it's a second forehand where it looks yes. like she's just standing up on the shot a little bit. You can't afford that in high altitude. If you do that, the wall will fly on you. And these players are um, not quite familiar with high altitude tennis. And if there's no pressure, then it's fine. They can tend to play the shots the way they like. But when they come under pressure, if you don't fully commit to the shot, you'll just fly it out the back, as we've seen her already do twice in the last uh, three or four points. Back to Deuce. And it's often when, when you're a little nervy, your body gets a little tighter and you struggle to release the record. You stand up on everything. So... Both players a little tight at this stage. Well, that was just a wonderful point by both players, actually. Um, both of them stayed in the rally quite long, and Tikhonova being the stronger player off the back of the court, just getting the better of the opponent. And she earns herself a third game point to take a 5-3 lead currently leading 4-3 serving Lushko's had a couple of opportunities this game as well oh. 
and she Again, does exactly that. Great effort by Tikhanova to mentally hang in there. She was under pressure with uh, a few of those second serves. Uh, if we recall the uh, three double faults that she made in the previous game, um, she was under pressure and she handled that really well. She takes a lead, 5-3, Tikhanova. Yeah, it's the Russian that uh, wins the arm wrestle for momentum. And what a key game that was just to prevent Glitchko from coming back all the way. 3-5. I love that little fist pump by Glitchko after the big serve. She knows this ball is not all over. She can hold serve yeah, and put all the pressure on ticking over to serve it out. She has been iffy on that second serve. Who knows? The set is not over. But... Uh, Luchko needs to hold serve first. Fifteen all. Left. And just not getting down to it quick enough. Pity touched on it every time Tikhanova gets the ball to go through the surface, and you'll see this. This is the shot right here. Just shoots through, and she just a fraction late in getting down. 15 all. Oh. Yeah, those Tikhanova ground strokes are very hard and flat, difficult to handle. Another unforced error by Klushko. 15-30. Took over, getting close to the end of the set. Again there, Pity, just getting stuck on the baseline. The return was, was short and coming through, but she got stuck on the baseline, reaching forward to try Let's and get serve. under it. And again, just, just a little exposed in movement. The lady in picture, of course, has got great footwork. 15-30. Oh, that's a better one-two by the Israeli player. But watch the positioning here. I think this is much better on her side of the court. You'll see this. She moves up to this ball. Look where she is. She's two meters inside the baseline, which then allows her to set and hit, not reach, and try and flick it with the left hand. Pressure point that she won there, 30 all. And a massive big serve. Look at that first pump. She is liking that. She's already mixed up her serve a bit better today, Mike, compared to yesterday with the uh, deuce T serve versus the Y. She's thrown a couple of wide ones as well. So that just creates the doubt in the opponent's mind. 40-30. Uh, Game point. Yes. Well, very unfortunate timing for the double fault. Gets this lady in picture back to within two points of uh, closing out the opening set. Advantage yeah, that is surprising. You don't often see uh, Tikhanova late on the second serve return. Credit to uh, Glitchko, got a little extra on this run and it shot through and you can just see that arm holding. She didn't get through it in time. She's a little late in contact or oh, couldn't close it. Good second serve and an opportunity to force her opponent to serve it out. Uh, Pity has uh, touched on this several times that uh, she's slow in getting down. That was a good return, very deep. And you could see as she was playing the ball, she was still on her way down. Yeah, great return. Back to Deuce. Deuce just trying to hang in there. Oh, great one-two again, going behind the opponent this time. Always a great 
tactic against the good movers playing behind their back. Again, watch the movement. There she hit it. She's moving through the ball. There's no setting and then reaching out to it. Look at that. Moving through it all the way and then just using the wrist to uh, generate the little bit of spin she needs. Super Bolts. point. Return by Tikhanova. Yes. This is becoming one of those long, decisive games. Tikhanova trying to trying to finish the set here, knowing that if she had to serve for the set, it would be difficult. She's trying to finish it right here. Glushko trying to keep the pressure on. Another good advantage. first serve by Glushko. Glushko, gaining herself another advantage. It's a tough game for Glushko, but the reverse of this is if she does hold then uh, Tikhanova feels like there was an opportunity to finish it. It wasn't necessary to serve it out. Now I have to serve it out. So there's a bit of a shift in mental confidence, if you like. So um, this is still very big for Glushko. And she went to her favorite serve. Game that is Glushko. a very, very big we hole for the young Israeli. Lina Glushko manages to hold serve, not without a struggle. She's going to force the number six seed, Anastasia Tikhanova, to serve out the first set. Impressive, uh, pity the way that uh, she just, I guess the best way is just stuck around. She just hasn't gone away. Yes, we saw some of this yesterday as well uh, by Glushko. This is a great great character that she has she never goes away she's been in trouble a few times in in various sets that we've seen her play and each time she just finds a way to get in there just applies a little pressure on the opponent and uh, keeps herself, uh, herself alive in the set uh, Tikhanova will be coming out serving and it wouldn't be as easy with her last couple of service games being really close and tight She's got a little bit of work ahead of her now and to try and finish out this first set. Mike, just the observation with a, a Glushka, we've mentioned sometimes the, the lack in footwork that she's had. It does seem that when, when she's serving on the ad court, that she, uh, coming out of the serve, she finds herself in a slightly better position compared to the deuce. Seeing that on the deuce court, you're coming out of the serve and you've got to move slightly to your left to create space. And if she's slightly slow in doing that, she gets stuck there on the right-hand side of the court, being out of position. Tikhanova serves for the first set, 5-4. Out. Always nice to serve with new balls. They've had a ball change, and that helps when you're serving for the set. You just get an extra bit of zip on that serve. It shoots through on the opponent, as we saw in that last point yeah, just for those of you that don't know it's uh, nine games and then 11 after that of course nine games because they warm they use these balls to warm up and they uh, they count the warm up as two games so nine games five four would be a change and then every 11 games from here until the match is uh, concluded That was a tentative shot by Tikhanova. She had the opportunity, she had the short ball and didn't quite get herself settled for that shot. She showed a little nerves earlier. She's done it here again, where, um, especially off the forehand. You'll see that she moves up nicely. The footwork's fine, but she pulls up on it, gets a little tight on the release of the, yeah, the shoulders get pulled up and, and there's no loose release of the racket. And that just shows a little bit of tension, more so on the forehand than the backhand. Something we'll just keep an eye on uh, throughout this match. 15 all. Mike, as you would know, the different 30, countries, uh, the players tend to have strengths and weaknesses. Players from countries, now the Russians, they've always been known for their good two-handed backhands. 
over the years, and I believe it's the case with Tikanova as well. Their forehands are not bad, but uh, the backhands they preferred, especially under pressure. Yeah, the backhands are really good. Oh, there's, a, there's another example. That is a regulation forehand, which three games ago, four games ago, she would have just hit it into the, 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 the forehand corner. And you can just see there's just that little tightness in the upper body, and there's no rotation, no release of the racket hit, which on the backhand side you won't see that. And of course, Rod Laver was famous for saying the backhand's the easiest shot uh, in tennis because once the racket is taken back, the shoulders have turned. On the forehand, not so. You can take the racket back and still be totally square to your opponent. And what? maybe that's where, um, when you get a little tight, the shoulders don't turn effectively. And it's just the hand coming through. 30 all, big point. Oh. She's got herself a break point, 30, PD. 40. This is getting exciting. Yeah, for the second game in a row, she's gotten herself into that position. Glushko just a genius in in getting herself, uh, getting herself in a position where she can still hang in there. Big point for Glushko, trying to even the match. Game, wow. Glushko. I tell you what, Pity. The whole set, she's Five games absolutely all. been scrapping to stay in there. And then on uh, break point, the biggest break point of this match, she launches a backhand down the line. Without hesitation, you'll see this. She sees the opportunity, and that's what we thought we'd see more of. That's her style of play, but she's had to uh, hang in there and battle. It's a massive break for the young Israeli five games all. So, uh, Pity just ticking over in her mind. I mean, she could have been 6-2. 3-1 up at this stage and all of a sudden she finds herself in a massive battle and we see more unforced there is a little tightness maybe feeling it that uh, this is getting away from her no no no, no. what does she do Outside. now to find Thank her you. rhythm again well she's going to mentally have to buckle down and feel she's it's still five all you got to watch the score line you know you've been ahead but you, you've got to get that out of your mind and almost restart and get yourself settled down and, and realize, okay, I'm not 4-1 up and possibly 5-1, it's 5-1, I'm still okay. And just get on with the battle. Maybe stay in the moment, think one point at a time, rather let your, instead of uh, worrying about what's happened to you up until this stage, obviously easier said than done, but that's the way she's going to have to think. Yeah, rather, 15, rather focus on the opportunities ahead rather than uh, looking at what has got away. Uh, she's 5-all uh, and 15-30. She has an opportunity to uh, break again here. Building pressure on the Glushko serve. That's all. Oh, that's a massive serve and uh, you can't blame Tikhanova for covering the big one wide. Glushko changes it up and comes straight down the tee. What a big serve at 15-30. Uh, One of the biggest points coming up of the set right here. Another great serve by Glushko. 40, 30. It's been a long while since I've seen a player play the big points as well as Glushko has the last two days. And once again, just uh, showing us there that she can come up with that big serve at 30 all gotten herself of a game point possibly be ahead for the first time in this match oh unforced error just Deuce. standing up just go back to Deuce last three games have just been nip and tuck it just seems like every point is so important but no one really dominating in their service games it's been a battle
fantastic rally, both players. Glushko really building Nisko. the point, and she looks more comfortable on those short uh, balls, especially in the forehand side. Almost caught herself late on that one, but great point. Glushko getting more solid off the back of the court as the set has gone along. Yeah, Glushko almost beating Tikhanova at her own game in that point. You almost feel the longer the rally goes, the better the chances of Tikhanova becomes. Not that time around, and it's an opportunity to take the lead for the first time. Yep. Just misses the big first serve. Let's second serve. Game, Glushko. Glushko winning the very important Glushko lead. five all game. Six games to she five. takes the first lead set. for the first time with a 6 5 lead. It's going to be interesting to see how these rallies unfold if we had to get to a tiebreaker. The difference between, between winning and losing the set They're very, very small at the moment. It's just going to be up to the player that can play their best tennis on the big points as we get uh, closer to the tie break yeah a complete turnaround 25 minutes ago there was no ways you were going to convince me that Glitchko would be 6-5 up in the opening set maybe the second set uh, Tikhanova was in total control 4-1 with opportunities to go 5-1 didn't happen the young Israeli just uh, wouldn't go away uh, got in the trenches hung in there and uh, well done to her she's now leading 6-5 and all the pressure is back on the number six seed, Anastasia Tikhanova. Well, Anastasia Tikhanova is uh, stepping up to serve. For the first time in this match, he trails. She serves to stay in the first set, 5-6. Really good uh, second serve by Tikhanova. Glushko actually sat on that and made a positive return. Just the lucky let cord. She'll be very happy with that that very very important first point of the game that you're looking for takes the pressure off you're obviously playing from ahead instead of be instead of behind another double fault by Tikhanova got that double fault count up to about six or seven already this set. Put herself in a lot of pressure with these double faults. Yeah, at this stage, her second serve pity is, um, is very much a lotto. Another one coming. So that is just a phenomenal shot concerning the uh, the 15, set 13. and the importance of that point. She just stepped in, hit it, and Glushko just seems to be getting better and better as this match gets along. And she thought this was going long, and this clipped the line. She somehow got it back in play, and then turns defense into yeah, massive offense. What a backhand inside out! Look at her getting down to that one nicely, and. She's 15, got herself two 40. set points. Yeah, it is just, it's just amazing what uh, Glushko can do. She's uh, an amazing fighter. We've seen her do it yesterday and uh, she's on the verge of doing it again. Double set point, Glushko. Well, that's hard done by. 
good first serve just called wide no Hawkeye here That was an unfortunate miss by Glushko. She had the court, she had the player moving to the other side, and she had the open court. She just had to make it and unfortunately missed. But she does have another set point. Just late on the prep again as she's moving forward, Biddy. We've seen that she struggles to stay low, and when she does move forward, the record goes with her. She doesn't get the record back in time. That'll do it. This is an unbelievable set, comeback Glushko. by uh, Lena Glushko. Seven games to five. Unseeded Israeli. 4-1 down. Almost going 5-1 down. Turns this first set around. And she manages to claim the first set. Seven games to five. Pity, that was a massive mental turnaround because that's all it was. She just refused to go away and found a way back into the set and uh, all kudos we saw a little bit of it in the second set yesterday against Miyazaki she's done it today in the first set yeah huge mental effort uh, this young Glushko just keeps on impressing us with the ability to fight and to stay in the in these tough situations Well, you can see there that Lusko wins 9 out of 10 points when making the first serve. What she'd not be happy with is that she's under 50%. Uh, Tikhanova's first serve went south the second half of the first set, and maybe that's why she allowed Lusko back. Both these players would like to uh, raise that first serve percentage to around 60-65%. Unforced errors, not much, much in it. Uh, and as you can see, total points truly reflects a 7-5 set. Yeah, that unforced error count is rather high from both players, Mike. And um, that would be a worry for both players. Try, they'll try and keep that number down as we move into the second set. But that was, the, that was more of a mental set uh, compared, to, compared to using your shots and anything else. Uh, if, he, if we look back at what happened, you know, we had taken over 4-1 up, double break with game point for a 5-1 lead um, that'll sit in the back of the mind and it wouldn't sit pretty yeah it was a close uh, first set Glitchko pulls it through she has an opportunity to serve first, first serve. in the second in love yeah quite important for uh, Glitchko to get off to a good start she doesn't want to put herself in the same position that she did in the first uh, fighting all that uh, way from 4-1 down uh, also takes mental uh, strength so an opportunity for her to have a better start in the second and put the pressure firmly on taking over yeah, that unforced error count uh, is, is a bit high. We, we saw many games where they were playing great tennis, but it would be one really good point and then an unforced error to get it back to 15 all. And so they went on. So both of them would like to keep the good side there. There were some really good points in there, but they really want to cut back on the freebies uh, that they were handing out to their opponents. 15 all. Yeah, Mike, I think especially 15. from Tikhanova's side, she, uh, the way she plays, she'd be disappointed how that unforced error count went up, especially in the second Good half of that first set. Yeah, and I think her style of play, she's not that powerful. She's, she's powerful enough, but she's not as powerful as Glitchko. So when she gives away a lot of unforced errors, she's not going to make it up with 10 winners, clean winners all over the court. Ah, correction, both That point. was a late call, but he corrected 40, it straight 15. away. So uh, great winner. See the very solid one-two. Yeah, comfortably inside on uh, that forehand. But uh, corrected by the line judge. Good job. And uh, two game points. Let's go. Well, 
Yeah, it's a nice Lushko. solid start uh, by Blusko. Second set. Very important for her to get off a good start after winning that first set and putting the pressure squarely on the lady in picture. Ticken over. Trails uh, one love after losing that first set and she has everything to do in the second set. Glushko finding herself ahead, whereas most of the first set she was behind. Only took the, the, took the lead in this match at 6-5 for the first time and securing the set at 6-5 and finds herself one set and 1-0 up with Tikhanova now suddenly playing from behind in this match. Tikhanova to serve, 1-0 Glushko second set. Really good return by Glushko. Got it nice down and low to Tikhanova. Tikhanova did manage to, to counter punch it and get herself back into that rally and just feeding off the pace. If you get the shot early up in high altitude, you can really create a lot of power. 30 15. Another good serve, Tikhanova. One feels that Tikhanova really needs to play a good game just to settle herself back into the set after having lost the commanding lead in the first set. That was a fantastic point by Tikhanova. A good 8, Four, 9, two, 10 rally Go and get the ball point. Oh boy. Uh, finishing this, the point with the nice down the line backhand. She had a, a slice in the middle of that rally just for some variation. And doing a great job this game of trying to settle her nerves, get back onto the scoreboard. Good variation. A little bit of a luck 30. with that net cord by Glushko. Yeah, it was a good shot and she had picked her spot. I reckon if it didn't clip the tape, it uh, pretty much would have been a clean winner. So uh, Tikhanova feels like uh, fair enough. Probably would have lost the point. Yeah, that's good play. Game. That forehand right there, Pity, was so much better than One those others that we saw. There was a fluency in it to release the racket. Those shoulders didn't pull up. You'll see it here. Look at that full rotation. Yeah, for all the up-and-coming players looking at or watching this match, it's good to see even the players at this level can get a bit tight sometimes. Yes, it's not whether you get tight, it's how you deal with it. What's your mental approach? What are your processes Spots. that you focus on? Love 15. We know that when the result starts affecting the mind, that's when you get tight. And if you can block out the result, which some people really struggle to do, like serving out a set, serving for a title, having a big break point. Um, if you can just focus on the process, you, you will be okay. Easier said than done. But that's what these players deal with. Uh, every single match
Yeah, I'm forced there by taking over. Yes, Monica, you know, with with myself being a being a coach and working with young players on a daily basis, that's possibly what we speak about most is how to deal with these tough situations and those thought processes that you go through, how to block out the end result, how to stay in the moment, play one point at a time. It's it really is easier said than done, but it needs to be done if you're gonna be a great player one day. It's just another tool uh, in your bag. I mean, you might have a great forehand or a big serve. If you have that mental ability, and it's mental toughness is such a broad word. What, what is mental toughness? And we know what that means. It's guys that under pressure play to a level that is close to what you see when they're on the practice court, but also being able to, to think straight under pressure. It's the young Radvanska that we saw there. She is a former ranked 29 player on the WTA Tour and she uh, lost uh, first round in this tournament to our young Isabella Kruger in this event. Nice to see a couple of players here that's Mike that's uh, had very high rankings in the past. We see Tamea Babos who's a four-time Grand Slam doubles champion also playing this tournament. So wonderful to see some of these top players coming to play and our players getting to play against them. Yeah, there was Ursula, of course, Agniska was as high as three in the world. 30 40. In that uh, she was very, very, very good uh, on the defensive side of things. She found a way to break down some of the most powerful players in the world with her defensive game. Nice seeing uh, Ursula out here and looking forward to seeing her in uh, next week's tournament. Tamia Babos, it just shows you the level of tennis, Biddy, four time Grand Slam winner finals of Wimbledon and the US Open as well, losing in yesterday's game final of the ladies doubles. The winners there this time Two around set. was uh, Chong and Wong from Hong Kong, the number three seats beating the number one seats. So uh, yeah, there she's in picture again. Well done Mike on your pronunciation of these, some of these rather difficult surnames, a lot of these ladies off from these Eastern European countries and as South Africans uh, it's not easy to pronounce some of these names of these of these players. Yeah, I think if we if we give them full credit, the number three seeds Yudi Chong and Hong Yi Cody Wong. Well well Mike rather you than me. Well they oh. lived up to their names and played some quality tennis and a very good win over the first seeds to me of Babos and Savinek of Russia. So uh, let's call it a mini upset. The number three seeds over the number one seeds in the ladies doubles. Well, just looking uh, at those stats again, the service percentages still not where they want them They're in the mid 40s. And both of these girls at this stage would love to get to that 60-65% because in a close match like that, if you can get your first serve up to 65, you're probably going to start taking control of the match. I've been impressed with uh, Tikhanova with her um, ability to stay calm even though she's um, almost wasted an opportunity in that first set. She looks kind of calm, reserved, in control. She probably feels that she's still right in it. That's where the experience comes in, and uh, being the sixth seed, she's been around. She's got a ranking to uh, 226. And there's yeah, a bit of defense, come. Pity. Fantastic shot by Tikhanova on the defense. Glushko looking a bit tentative going up to that dry volley. We spoke about that dry volley, but after you hit it, doesn't mean the point's over. So uh, don't assume it's a winner. Here comes the big swinging volley. Nice shot. But now you got to cover. Yeah, that's good defense. Dirty love. Oh, Tikhanova really picking up her game again. A little bit similar to, to the first set. She's gotten that important break. She's in control of this game already. Trying to take the lead uh, to 3-1. We'll have to wait and see when she gets into a leading situation where she can improve on the previous set and keep the lead. Forty love. Nice first serve down the tee by Tikhanova. 
couple of first serves in this game and immediately she's on the front foot uh, what a nice way to consolidate the break if she can close this one out to love would be great for the tournament if we can see a nice tough three-setter mic uh, between these two players 4 to 15 that second serve inconsistent she's just creeping in into the thicken over there fortunately for it's at 40 love this time yeah we saw that yesterday a few times with some of the players as well it's at altitude that second serve if you get yourself squared up and that uh, right side comes around you're going to struggle to make serves. The ball flies a little bit, being at altitude. Oh, that was just a great 40, slice 30. played by Tikhanova. Unfortunately, just pushing the next forehand wide. But that's one of the better slices that we've seen in this match. I'm liking this defensive play here, a little forehand slice. And that's maybe why she caught the one down the line late. Just shooting off the surface a touch. So uh, kudos to Glutschko for picking up that great slice uh, with a little bit of a slice of her own. Nice serve to close yeah, it out. Good job. Tikhanova uh, pulls out the big serve when she needs it. Hits her target down the tee. This is well placed. Look at that. Gets Glutschko on the full stretch. And she consolidates the break. She leads 3-1 after losing the opening set 7-5. swing we're seeing at the moment taken over slightly in control again Glushko just going off the ball just a bit with her quality maybe Glushko just feels that she could give her at least a 4-1 lead I mean that's no problem right yeah we've seen Glushko starting many of the sets that she's played slowly but then often finding a way back in it relatively sure she's not doing it on purpose but uh, it is happening relatively sure you say Excellent forehand by Tikhanova. She's got herself at 15.30. If she can find a way to get that second break, she'll put herself in a strong position in the set. Oh, unfortunate good slice good mix up she's starting to use that backhand slice just to forward to get the ball to stay low yeah Glitchko here got lucky you'll see there's a bit of a miss hit that uh, comes up short cross court draws the slice and she's unlucky it's a good slice just drags it wide by a touch and I tell you what it would have been very effective if it caught the line 30 all Serve by Klushko. Not the first time that she's done that. The last two days, this time going wide and just catching Tikhanova leaning in the wrong direction. She served well to the deuce court today. She's mixed it up. There was a bit of a pattern yesterday, but she's uh, really mixing it up today. Just once again, Klushko just hanging in there. She was in trouble this game and she just eight. found a Three way to two, sneak set. that service set, game Lushko. against uh, Tikhanova you know if she if she loses that game she's in real trouble at 4-1 but she just keeps on hanging in there it's just amazing the uh, the mental 
resilience that she has uh, just hanging in there in these tough situations. Yeah, it's been very impressive. We saw it yesterday at the stage there at, uh, you know, midway through the second. I was very convinced that uh, Miyazaki had that under control and was pretty much just going to cruise to another 6-3 set. Okay. Didn't turn out that way a couple of hours later. Luchko was through to the final. Similarly, yeah, we had uh, taken over in total control of the first and here we are uh, in the second where Tekanova was threatening to take control. Just doesn't happen. Yes, when I was also speaking to Miyazaki's coach earlier, and as we saw yesterday, as soon as one of these players are ahead in a commanding position and they need to finish the point under pressure in high altitude, and if they just have a little bit of doubt, they're starting to miss. And it just seems to me like many of these players, Mike, they, 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 they would rather prefer to defend under pressure compared to be in control and have to finish the point. And pity that's the reason why these players are just one step short of the big show. And uh, we said, what do they need? Because their games are good, they've got great ground strength, mentally showing us that they can hang in and fight and do whatever. But it's just when you get to that top level, when those players have to close out a game, close out a point, and there's an opportunity, they'd much rather be the person having to hit that shot. Uh, we know that's why Djokovic is, is so tough. Uh, every time he has that opportunity, you know he's going to take it. Tiger love. Woods, when he had to make a putt, you were going to bet on the fact that he's the one that's going to make it, not miss it. Yes, uh, and uh, Mike, I've been watching um, a little bit of the Miami Open yesterday with this finals with uh, Swiatek at the moment, dominating that's the the last couple of weeks. And she does exactly that, like that. She's not waiting for something to happen. She's making it happen. They make it happen. They want the pressure point. Uh, that's the only way you win is to get an opportunity. And that opportunity brings pressure. But they want that. And in this case, you say often they'd rather be the person not serving for the set and watch the other one crumble. Where uh, if you asked uh, Schweitek, she'd say, I'd rather be up 5-4 and let me serve. You know, where uh, most girls would say, put me up 5-4 and let the other one serve. Uh, that, that's, that's a skill and a belief that uh, will take you from this level to the top 100. And uh, these girls are working on it. As we see coach Rublev. Huh? Just nervously looking on. Uh, she understands that uh, her charge is not totally out of it. She had the first set and she looks like she wants to take control here again. Maybe she's on a win bonus system. Pity, we never know. There you know, might be a lot riding on this. I tell you, Mike, these Russian moms that have um, been coaching a lot of these players over the years, they are quite tough on their players. Don't know if our South okay, African youngsters would be able to handle that type of toughness. No chance, uh, in my mind, there's a little bit of method in the madness, but uh, they've produced some wonderful players over the years, and as you say, Typically, you come to these big tournaments and you've been there so many times. We have all these coaches with their players and then you have the Russians with their moms who are the coaches and they are 10 times tougher than the coaches. Yes, Mike, it's, it was surprising to me. I spoke to Jeremy Bates about it um, through the course of this week. And when I was here, I'm helping this young American girl this week as well whenever she plays in South Africa. And um, I find myself and him being the oldest most experienced coaches at this level whereas a lot of these young ladies are travel with quite young coaches um, I don't know why that is is if it's by choice or uh, financially um, but um, obviously some of the federations that are financially stronger most of those that are has the grand slams they can afford to have better coaches this level and being able to to help them you know, you touched on that. It, it, I firmly believe it is a financial uh, to get one of the older, more experienced coaches to come at this level. Your expenses just go That's way up through the roof. You touched on the fact that Jeremy Bates is here with Miyazaki, but her first choice coach is at Miami, which is a bigger tournament with Federation players from the, the LTE, um, LTA. Uh, and, and that makes a difference, you know, uh, where there's money. The best players are, but the best minds, the best coaches, the best physios, the best biokineticists, they travel with those players. And uh, these guys at this level have budgets and, and money that are limited. Uh, and uh, they have to make the best of what they have. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate, Again, but it's true. 
and you've seen at this level when there's big federations involved that send good coaches with young players and Second they set. don't have those constraints the difference it's making i think we can see in tikanova that the calmness that she has things have not gone her way in this match from 4-1 in the first that she you said it she's still calm she still looks like she believes she's in it and that's got to be some of that experience from coach rublev coming down and uh, and working and we saw her there just encouraging putting a word or two through the fence there uh, just to keep her uh, in it she's up four three she picks up the break now she might close and then you get in a third and the whole game changes because now glitchko says i won the first set i was in control now we're in the third so Tikanova can find herself in a better position slowly those first serve percentages are creeping up we need to get to that 60 percent mark but what is good you can see glitchko with 78 percent when she makes it is why she is competing in the set we said it at the top of the of the broadcast that she has to serve well she needs that first serve it's a weapon also the unforced error count Tikanova it's um, creeping up again already up to 17 yeah and she needs to make less unforced errors than glitchko the same way that glitchko needs to win a high percentage of her first serve it's almost a must so uh, she'd like to trim down on the unforced errors taken over serving at 4-3 and she'd like to have a nice solid service game here at 5-3 uh, it'd be nice to throw the balls over to the other side of the court uh, she'll be feeling in charge. 4-3, upper break. Ticken over, serves. La 15. Good return, Glushko. Putting Ticken over under pressure. It was a nice serve, but uh, well read by the opponent. Credit to Tikhanova going for that second serve up the tee and making it, putting uh, Glushko under pressure. Glushko doing well to get back into the point, but a uh, big point for Tikhanova to win serving at 4-3. Definitely don't want to be love 30 down, and she's got herself to 15 all and in a good position. Yeah, you saw Glushko there just taking care of her jewelry. I think she got slapped around by her jewelry on that white back end, just tucking it into her clothing. Oh, that caught 13, the line. 15. Nice little body second serve, that one. Just uh, catching the line and skidding Again. through. Always a good tactic against the uh, taller players with uh, longer reach. Rather to go right into the body. Yeah, get inside that wingspan. Makes it uh, more difficult to release that racket head. Out. Oh, that tentative. That's all. Creeping in again. Just pulling out of that shot. Uh, as she did uh, when we got into the latter stages of that first set, Mike. Yeah, and, and again, it's 30 all here, but she's made two unforced errors off the ground strokes, and those are the two points that she's given to Glusko. Then she's won two. So Glusko at this stage is just hanging around. It's 30 all, and she hasn't really done much. Out. Yeah, it's a good play. 14, it's unfortunate. 13. Moving forward this time, getting inside the court, and I liked everything about it. Maybe just not getting enough topspin on it. But a good play by uh, Glitchko. And a 30 all point is where you want to take charge. You want to make the play, and that was all good. Unfortunate that she just missed the baseline. Nice opportunity now for Ticken Over. See if she can uh, get herself to 5 3.
That was good tennis yes. by both players. Glushko doing well to hang into that point. Tikhanova mostly in control of it. But once again, just lifting that forehand a little bit long. As we seen many of the players during the course of the week. If there's a slight lack of commitment on that forehand side in high altitude, these players will miss it on the long side. They really got to remind themselves to stay down on that shot, especially when they want to be aggressive. Yeah, and again, it's uh, three points for Tikhanova, and then she gave three away. And she keeps on winning the points with her serve, which is obviously not her strength and then um, misses with the strength. So it's a bit upside down for her at the moment. No, it's a mental thing, Pity. You're right here again. She's in uh, charge of this game. She has the first. She makes the serve and gets into the rally. That's where she wants to be. But uh, she has really struggled to, uh, to close out. Oh, is there a few drops coming down? Weather prediction was somewhere between 11 and 12 for some drops. Yeah. The baseline is a little bit slippery. Yeah, the umpire checks the lines. That's the most slippery part of the court, and it looks like he's going to call them off. He's not happy, uh, and all it takes is one slip on the baseline, and you'll have a, a rolled ankle or you'd have a muscle strain. So uh, this could be very unfortunate because it's setting in quite heavy around uh, the University of Pretoria. So uh, we might see the players just leave the court for the moment. So who does this favor? Interesting time uh, to leave the court. Um, it's getting heavier. Thank you for yes, it's difficult to say. Normally, obviously, the person that's behind in the match, it would favor. In Tikhanova's case, she, she, um, she seems to be um, in control. She's got a game point. That wouldn't be a good time uh, to leave when you're serving, trying to get to a 5-3 lead, that'll be to a disadvantage, even though she's a set behind. I agree. I do think, though, that if that wasn't the exact scoreline, it might be a good thing for Tikhanova. They may now speak to their coaches. So uh, they, she can go have a nice, calm chat to uh, Mrs. Rublev, and they can settle down and just say, look, your game plan's good. You're just not executing, making a few unforced errors. We need you to really settle down. So maybe in the overall uh, scheme of things, as you said, she is trailing. She was dominating in the first. She's taking control of the second. This match is not over, and she could comfortably still win it in the third. Not a nice time in the game to leave the court, as you say. You're going to have to come out and make that first serve uh, straight off the bat. But then again, maybe it's easier to make a first serve than rip a, a good return. Who knows? Mike, you, you'll know when, um, when there's a rain delay and the players are coming off the court, the player that has the coach or the better coach um, um, that can mentally guide them and help them while they're still busy playing the match, as we see happens now, could possibly have a slight advantage just to settle the nerves. And uh, They've seen some of their match. They've, they've picked up a few uh, patterns of the opponent and they'll be able to, um, to help that player more than the other one. 100% Pity. I fully agree with that. We've seen it many, many times that after a rain delay, the better team comes out on top and uh, I think that the coaching will play a role at this stage of the match. That's where we are. The first set went to uh, Lina Glushko. Against the odds, we may say, down 4-1 in the first. She now trails 3-4, but it's Tikhanova who has a game point to take a 5-3 lead. The rain is coming down at the University of Pretoria. We'll have to see how long this delay is.
Service to the Game Award. And it is with an absolute pleasure that we honor Annette Duploy for her long service to the game of tennis. Annette, 